We're hunting dangerous animals. Hi guys, I'm Jamie Seymour from James Cook University, and I'm what's called a toxinologist. And that's a groovy name for someone that works on venomous animals. And if you're gonna work on venomous animals, Australia is the best place to do that. We have a greater number of species and a greater number of venomous animals than any other place on the planet. So let's have a quick look at that. I mean, if we look at the 10 most venomous snakes in the world. We've got nine of those top 10. We have the world's most venomous spider. the Sydney funnel web. And just when you think it's safe, we've got the world's most venomous tree, the stinging tree. But then let's step sideways slightly and go to the marine environment. On the Great Barrier Reef, we have lots of dangerous and venomous animals out there. Let's start with a really simple one. This one I know you're all familiar with. This is the crown of thorn starfish and it's venomous. It has venom glands on those spines. So if those spines punch your body, you end up with venom inside and it hurts. It's there for protection. We can go from there. We actually have the world's most venomous cephalopod, the blue ringed octopus. A really, really cool little critter. We also have the world's most venomous snail, the cone snail. Now, these are seriously cool. They've got a hypodermic needle that comes out of their mouth, which they use to inject into fish and cause paralysis in under two seconds from a snail. And then of course, we have the world's most venomous fish. The stonefish, what a absolutely amazing animal. This guy's got a series of spines along its back. You found them all over the GBR and they use this venom to de for defense. Basically, these guys use this to stop them from being eaten by things like moray eels and sea snakes. So it uses the venom to cause pain, and that hopefully trains the animal not to get eaten again. Seriously cool. And then of course, we have the world's most venomous animal, the big box jellyfish. Now, these are seriously cool animals. They've got 24 eyes, so they're able to see in 360 degree vision all around them. They can swim at the speed of an Olympic swimmer. They sleep at night. They're 96% water at the bottom of the evolutionary tree. Uh, and they can kill you with two meters of tentacle in under 120, 160 seconds. The world's most venomous animal. But the question you've got to ask yourself is why? Why does Australia have so many venomous animals? We're gonna come back to that one. What I want you to do though, is think of venomous animals, not as mindless killing machines, but of actually really sophisticated chemists. So if we go back and look at some of these animals we find on the Great Barrier Reef, like the blue ringed octopus, this guy actually has bacteria 
which lives in its salivary glands, which produces the toxin that it uses as a venom. So it doesn't make its own venom like snakes do, but it uses it in the same way. If we go back and look at our cone snails, now these are serious chemists. They have what's referred to as an offensive and a defensive venom. In other words, they have a venom they use for killing their prey, fish, but if something attacks them, they make a completely different venom to stop the predator from attacking them. I mean, that's cool. And then of course, if we go back to the big box jellyfish, now these are true chemists. And if you have a look, they have a change in their venom depending on what they're feeding on. So if they feed on prawns, they have a different venom than if they're feeding on fish. They have what's referred to as an ontogenetic venom shift. In other words, small or baby animals have a different venom from adult animals. They have a different venom depending on which time of the year you collect them, whether you collect them in November, December, January, February. They have a different venom if you catch them from Cairns or from Townsville or from Mackay. But what really seems to be cool about these guys is there seems to be some suggestion that if you rear them at different temperatures, their venom profile can change as well. Why is that important? Well, with global warming and, in, and an increase in the water temperature, these guys may end up with a completely different venom than they have at present. So let's come back to that question I asked. Why are there so many venomous animals and highly venomous animals like that out on the Great Barrier Reef or within Australia? Well, to be honest, we don't really have a good answer for that. We've got a couple of theories, but they all have holes in them. So what I want you to do is to have a think. I'm sure you've got some ideas. Have a think about it, see what you can come up with, and drop me a line. I'd love to have a chat to you about them. And if you're worried about going out on the Great Barrier Reef and getting attacked by one of these animals, don't be. If you look in Australia, we have on our ridge about seven or eight people a year die from stings or bites from venomous animals. If you look at the number of people that die from road accidents, or from alcohol or drugs, it's over 3,000. So if you are going to have a debilitating accident or die somewhere in Australia, it's almost certainly not going to be on the Great Barrier Reef. Catch on the flip side, guys. I'm off to find some more dangerous animals.